This video will review the calculation of the critical path and the use of the optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic times to answer questions about the probability of achieving a certain project completion time. This is a construction project and there are activities A through K defined with the predecessor relationships. We also have optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic project completion times. These could be provided by an expert or manager in a case where the completion time for an activity is uncertain. The first thing that we need to do with the optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic activity times is to calculate the mean and the variance for each activity. We're using the assumptions that the activity times have a probability distribution and it's the beta distribution. So more information is available in the textbook. For the beta distribution, the mean will be the smallest possible time or optimistic, plus four times the most likely, plus the pessimistic, divided by six. This formula holds for any beta distribution. I copied the mean time formula down to all the activities because it will be exactly the same for each activity. The variance of the activity time will be the pessimistic or longest minus the optimistic, the quantity squared, divided by 36. Once we enter this formula for the first activity, we can copy this down to the other activities. Now we need to calculate the critical path. We will do so by using the mean time. In this case, we have the project network diagram below. The early start time for A is zero because it has no predecessors. The early finish time for A in any activity is the early start time plus the most likely time, excuse me, plus the mean time. I'm going to click on the bottom corner of this cell to copy that down. Now we need to go through the rest of the activities and find the earliest start times. The early start times for B, C, and D are all the same because each of these follow A in the project network diagram. Each of those will just be a reference to the early finish time for A. The early start time for E is the early finish time for B. Activity F has two predecessors, E and C, so the early start time is the maximum of the early finish for C and the early finish for E. Intuitively, if both of these activities must be completed before we can start F, the early start for F would have to be the longer of the two early finish times. The early start for G is calculated the same way. The early start for F, or excuse me, H is equal to the early finish for F, as is the early start for I. J has three predecessors in the network, so its early start, start time will be the maximum of those three early finish times, D, G, 
H. The early start for J will be the max of the early finish for I and J. So we can see that 40.17 is the early finish time. There's only one completion time activity in this network, and that's K. So the latest finish for K is equal to the maximum of all the early finish times. I put dollar signs in this formula as a habit, but it's not necessary if we're not going to copy it this formula to any other cells, so it's optional. The late start for any activity is the late finish minus the mean time. These values obviously aren't correct for anything but the final activity k. j has one successor in the network, that's k. So the late finish for, K, for J is equal to the late start for K. I works the same way. H has one successor, that's J. So the early latest finish is equal to the late start for J. G works the same way. F has two successors in the network. Remember, the easiest way to find latest finish times is to look and find in the network diagram the successors. The late start time for those successors will determine the late finish time. In this case, because F has to be completed before both of these activities, to keep the project on time, we would need to find the smallest late start time for the successors. The minimum of the late start for H and I. Activity E also has two successors in the network, F and G. Its late finish will be the minimum of the late start times for those two activities. D simply has one successor, that's J. C has two successors. Its late finish time will be the minimum late start for F and G. B has one successor, which is E. A has three successors, B, C, and D. So it must finish before the earliest of these three late start times. The slack will be the late finish minus the early finish. And this will be true for every activity, so once we enter this for the first activity, we can copy it down to the remainder of the cells. I copy these by just simply clicking in the bottom right corner, and it will copy it down as far as it sees data in the adjacent cells. Activities that have zero slack are on the critical path. I'm going to denote this by placing a 1 in this column by the critical activities. I'm going to look to the diagram to make sure we've only identified we're only marking one critical path, because there could be more than one. Critical path goes from A to C to F to H, to J, to K. 
For the calculations we're going to do for the remainder of this problem, we would only want to mark one critical path in column M. I have a set of cells up here where we'll calculate the mean for the critical path, the variance for the critical path, and the standard deviation. To find the mean of the critical path, we would simply sum up the mean time for each of the critical activities. This should also be equal to the project completion time of 40.17, but we'll make a calculation to make sure we've done our work correctly. Because we have the ones marked in the critical path column, we can sum up the mean times on the critical path by using the sum product formula, referencing the critical path column, entering a comma, and referencing the mean column. The sum product formula goes row by row and multiplies values in column M by values in column F. So if there's a blank or a zero in column M, it's simply going to ignore the value in column F, but it will sum up all the other values that are on the critical path. And we see it's the same as the project completion time. The same formula works for the variance. We sum up the variances of the activities on the critical path, and a good way to do this is with the sum product formula, where column M contains one and zeros. So 10.03 is the variance of the critical path. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Now we want to know the probability that this project completes before 36 days. We're assuming that the critical path time has a normal distribution. So to calculate this probability, we would use the norm dist function in Excel. The time we're interested in is 36. The mean is 40.17, the standard deviation is 3.17, and we want the cumulative probability of everything up to 36. We find it's about 9.4%. If we wanted a right tail probability, say the probability that the activity take, uh, that the project takes longer than 40 days, we would use 1 minus the norm of this function. Enter 40 is our value of interest. Enter our mean, standard deviation, and cumulative. Norm disk finds the probability of everything up to 40, but if we want the probability beyond that, we would subtract from 1. And that's 52%. We could also find the probability, for instance, of the day in which, where the project will be completed with 95% certainty. This is done with the norm inverse function. We enter 95% as our probability, our mean, and our standard deviation. So there's a 95% probability that the project will be completed before 45.4 days.